Well, what we have now is a full range of the G turbos in the 70 series from the 333 through to the 400 titanium, all available with ball bearing technology. Two years in the making to get to this point. We've done two years worth of testing and had absolute reliability with our ball bearing cartridge. We've tested up to 50 PSI. Uh, you would have seen the videos on the Hilux where we've done drag testing and that. In actual fact, that was testing our, well, in actual fact, that was testing our G380 ball bearing Titan turbocharger at 51 PSI. We've done towing testing, extreme tow loads, up hills, long-term testing, more than 50,000 kilometers of cumulative testing on these products. So let's start at the beginning. What do we got here? We got the G333. The G333 is just the go-to turbo for bottom end response. Now, when people think ball bearings or torque ball bearings, often you hear people say, oh, you know, ball bearing increase the response by about 200 RPM. Well, in actual fact, we found that to be fairly true. The G333 we see come in at around that sort of 1,450 to 1,600 RPM range, depending on the vehicle setup. And we now see it coming at that 1,300 to 1,450 range. I mean, we, see, we can see 1,000 Newton meters at 1,400, 1,450 RPM at the wheels if you have the right combined setup on the vehicle. It's just incredible. And the feeling of just no lag. I mean, the turbo just feels like it's on all the time. That's the best way to describe it. It's like it never really isn't in boost. Uh, it's just incredible. So here's our dyno report that displays a back-to-back -back comparison between our current journal bearing G333 versus the new ball bearing G333 with no changes at all to the ECU calibration. The part that we're interested in is what happens between 1000 and 1500 RPM. The dotted lines are our torque measurement with our blue line being the current G333 and the green line being the new ball bearing. You can see with the ball bearing unit, we've been able to start the run earlier due to its increase in response and gained about 250 RPM, which has resulted in torque gained in the low RPM working zone. Additionally, throughout the rev range, we have gained a small amount of boost pressure and this has resulted in a leaner air fuel ratio from the mid to the top end of the run. And this is primarily based to the increased efficiency of the turbocharger. With the ball bearing unit, we started the run at 1100 RPM, starting at 350 Newton meters at the wheels. The journal bearing doesn't see this until 1350 RPM. This is a huge difference. What you see down low is really magnified throughout the whole rev range in terms of drivability, giving much more workable operating range to your vehicle with the added bonus of up to two and a half times factory torque and double factory power on standard injectors. So moving on to the G380. The G380 in our range of turbos is a G400 but with a Titan compressor wheel instead of titanium. Now Titan, as we've mentioned before, is a 2618 American manufactured material with a special coating on it. And the special coating gives it abrasion resistance and corrosion resistance. This main, helps you maintain balance integrity over the life of the turbocharger, especially on four wheel drive vehicles. And balance integrity is what you want for life expectancy. The G380 turbocharger in, in both ball bearing and journal bearing is capable of 36, 37 PSI at 3000 RPM and will put down up to 380 wheel horsepower. That's where it gets its name from. Based on standard tires or maybe 33 inch all terrains. The G400 can do 44 PSI at 3000 RPM, meaning you can get more than 400 horsepower at the wheels at 16 to one air fuel ratio running standard or maybe 33 inch all terrain tires. We've pushed this thing really hard and seen as much as 480 horsepower at the wheels at about 15 to one. Now that's stretching friendships, but you know, in a numbers game, that's what it can do. So everyone's heard about why a ball bearing might offer improved bottom end performance. And what is it? Why does it work like that? Well, the journal bearings operate in continuous shear with the oil. So you have a, an oil film, even at high temperatures, you know, operating temperature of the turbocharger, the, the oil film is quite low viscosity. But despite that, it's operating in a bearing clearance of about, you know, 0 0.03 of a millimeter. And that's quite a, you know, thin cross section. And when you've got maybe a nine millimeter bearing like we operate in these, um, there's the, the shear force becomes quite a negative aspect of turbocharger um, lag, really. Now, in a loaded up situation, a continuous load situation, you don't see a massive difference, but in that instant throttle response, you'll always find that the bear, ball bearing has less friction initially, and the shaft speed will be higher from the beginning in, in a light load situation. And when you do your transient, you're already at a higher uh, RPM to start with, and you'll be on boost quicker. And you, you do notice that it's a, sometimes these things aren't that easily seen on the dyno, but the seat of the pants is really quite the experience. Also with the ball bearing, the reason is that the balls are in constant contact, but there's no sliding. That means there's no, there's no drag. You have the drag of a very thin oil film that the balls are, are pulling around, but in actual fact, the, the balls are, 
um, in contact, constant contact on a surface with a very small surface area. And so there's, there's, there should, in theory, there's, there's very limited friction there. A lot of the friction comes from like when I spin this uh, here, you'll see it lasts quite a while. Like when I, when, I, um, when I spin it, a lot of the friction from that is actually the oil seals on the front and back of the turbocharger. Ball bearing technology is more expensive. And so a lot of the designs you see on the market are built for a price. In fact, it's fair to say that every OEM manufacturer builds a turbo for a price. I mean, the turbocharger found on the 70 series is a first generation Garrett VNT system. It's, it's the same basic turbocharger plus or minus that was found on a 1998 BMW. And yet you don't find that generation on the latest BMW. That being said, our next gen vein system that you, we, we have put in these systems, in these turbochargers, sorry, is far superior to all of those. Um, we pull turbos out you know, that are since 2019 to update to a new model and the vein system is, is basically like new, which is pretty amazing. But effectively, since turbos are built to a price, you will, the, the corners are cut. Materials that are used or the design that is used that might be uh, difficult to manufacture or time consuming to manufacture, those are avoided in the OEM space. And that's where G-Turbo comes in to not build to a, a price, but build to a performance. Some of the applications where you'll find that the ball bearing um, setups will have a noticeable difference over a journal bearing is when you do limited other things. I mean, you're always, no matter, uh, with, with these uh, vehicles, there's so many things that you can change. You know, you can put better intercoolers on, better you know, fan systems for the intercoolers, a, a better air box, a high flow intake power pipe to the turbo, a better exhaust system, you know, all of these things, higher flow in, you know, or better atomizing injectors like our Vidi Pro 100s, or all of these things make a difference. But where you notice it the most is like, if you just put say a G333 or even a G400 Titanium on a vehicle that's got no other mods whatsoever except maybe a clutch exhaust, and you've just put a remap on it, man, it's, it's astonishing. Like it beats the factory turbo in, in bottom end response. So our ball bearing turbos that we brought out have all of the technology that we have in the other turbos. So we've got the turbine housing with a thicker flange for less leakage. We've got the larger outlet so that we could have a much higher flow. I mean, the diameter inside here is about 60 mil versus 49 mil on the standard turbocharger. We've got a one piece core, so we don't get flex between the compressor cover and the housing. So we don't have like the compressor wheel touching the, the housing. Uh, we've got our stainless steel actuators for corrosion resistance to maintain integrity and in adverse conditions because the turbocharger, when they're fitted to these, is sat right down low in the system. Um, and yeah, it's really everything that you find on the existing turbocharger range is found on the ball bearing range with the addition of the ball bearing. So we've got the G380 and the G400 Titanium or the G380 Titan and the G400 Titanium. The difference is only the material in the compressor wheel. Titanium does have a higher density than aluminium. And so there is a slight difference in throttle response between the two. It's marginal. You can barely tell the difference. It's almost arguable that you can't, but in theory, there is a difference. So what we've done is for people that don't want to run uh, as a high boost, they never need to run say more than 35 or 36 PSI, well, you may as well go for the Titan. The titanium does, however, offer you that absolute integrity over the life of the turbocharger that its balance will main be maintained. Good balance in these turbochargers is the key to reliability because vibration is what kills turbochargers. When testing the ball bearing system, we had a, several parameters we wanted to see. One was what was the bearing uh, wear over the duration of the tests. And we wanted to make sure that the testing phase uh, was held in the most extreme environment. So basically we're trying to load up these turbochargers in ways that only the most um, rigorous use customers would experience. So to do this, we mostly tested using the uh, 400 titanium because the titanium compressor wheel will almost withstand anything. Um, whereas the uh, Titan is all out at about 185,000 RPM, the titanium wheel can handle 220,000 RPM. So then it comes down to the bearing system. Can the bearing system withstand those high RPMs for extended periods? Can it deal with the uh, drive pressure uh, forcing the turbine wheel into the turbocharger in, uh, at that high RPM. And then after that long of service, you know, what measurable wear do we find in a ball bearing system? Because in a ball bearing system, they are a constant contact bearing, meaning they, they will always wear, so they do have a life. So the reality is that ball bearings do have a life expectancy. We just wanted to make sure that that life expectancy was far outside of what's normally required in a turbocharger system so that you as a customer don't have to think about that even though we, when we design these things, really have that in the forefront of our minds. So if I had just bought a brand new 70 series, like this one, or the one out the front that's done under a thousand Ks as well, the very first thing I would do before I did any other thing, if I was only interested in what is the first restriction on the vehicle, 
it is absolutely the turbocharger. Now the turbocharger on factory has a 44.5 mil inducer on the compressor wheel. That is the, all, th all other things being equal, that is the absolute smallest part of the air induction system. It's smaller than any part of the snorkel, it's smaller than any part of the intake system. In the case of the G333, the flow is about 35, 40% more than the standard turbocharger. Now, it's not only 35, 40% more, you could probably push it 60 to 70% more in some environments, simply because its construction um, is so much stronger. The materials that we've used are really high end. The balancing quality that we have is really high end. Um, and it means that you can get the absolute most out of it. But basically, um, and we do have videos on this, we do got sample dyno sheets, which we'll show you. The standard turbocharger, DPF in place, no mods at all. We'll do around that 200, maybe 210 on standard wheels horsepower. Putting this turbocharger on will allow you to get over 300 horsepower at the wheels, DPF in place, no other mods on the vehicle except to tune. And that's just amazing. One of the other advantages of having a ball bearing, uh, bearing system or a bearing system that has much lower friction is that there's less drive pressure required to drive it. And what this translates to is lower drive pressures when you're cruising, particularly at low RPM when you're towing uh, where you want that maximum efficiency. I do recommend sort of towing in that range of probably not less than sort of 1700, around that 1750 to 2000 RPM. That's your happy zone uh, with about 1800 RPM being the optimal. You will find that say a G333 with the ball bearing system will have a slightly lower drive pressure than the G333 with the journal. And this will translate to better pulling power on hills and slightly improve fuel consumption. So that's the ball bearing system guys. They're in stock, ready to ship now. If you need to have a driving one to see if this is like real, Come down to G Turbo or one of our affiliates and go for a drive.